I want to take you through the journey because I was affected and touched by breast cancer. At 23, uh, 1997, I left uh, Australia uh, to do the backpacking thing, as most Australians do, and I had everything ahead of me. I'd finished my degree, I was a nurse, I was going to work and backpack around Europe. I was learning to fly a little Cessna with my dad a few times, having a good time learning to cook, which I still can't, and uh, traveling the world. And I found the lump at age 23, and as a healthcare professional, it still took me two weeks to try and get the courage to go down and figure out what it was. I had my treatment uh, in London, and uh, it was a very dark uh, period. I wasn't around family. Um, I had some friends there, but I'd newly come to, to London. I did have a small a group, but I very much questioned uh, why me. I was lucky to have different support networks. And when I got asked to move to Bahrain, I had been clear for six to seven years. I believe that you can let the incident shape you, or you can shape the incident. And listen, I'm no hero, and what you see on the facade is very different to what goes on internally. I have as many skeletons as you all do, and I have many uh, insecurities and things like that, so it might look like a good show, but we all have something that shaped us to bring us to where we are now. And I think maybe that was the incident that shaped me, because I know it's aligned my profession. It's funny to think that I never envisaged to be a founder of a breast cancer charity, in a country that I couldn't find on the map when I was first asked to come here uh, and, and how far we've come. So I think for everyone, something in your life shapes you and you either decide to use that to push yourself forward. Uh, and I think that's important, whatever it is, however small or big. So when I arrived in Bahrain, uh, I decided to do a one-off event, uh, a birthday event actually for my 30th, you're in a very unique position when you don't want for anything in your life. I had a roof over my head, my family were fine, and I had a good job. So I asked people to put money in an envelope for my 30th birthday. And I raised 300 dinar, which was pretty decent, good friends. And I couldn't find anywhere to donate it. I couldn't find anywhere to direct it to, to support breast cancer in Bahrain. So I gave that to my mother and she donated it to an Australian breast cancer charity. So it got me thinking, because again, I was having uh, personal issues at that time, and I thought, if I can't find the information, and this is before social media going viral, where information was accessible for everyone, how does the average person in Bahrain find out? So I decided to put up a one-off event with a hundred of nearest and dearest friends, and I raised 10,500 dinar on the first night. That was in 2004. And I was told then you really need to focus on this. The community need this. Someone very close and important to me. And I decided, okay, maybe this is something that I should do. But I went about my way thinking that, and always at the start, that I had to lay a foundation stone. At the end of the day, I don't look like the typical Arab. I'm expat, and my home was never meant to be in Bahrain. So if I don't lay the foundation and pave the way forward for people behind me, then I'm just doing it for something to do while I'm here. And I think charity and community engagement needs to be exactly that. We need to not bang our drum to say, I'll show you the way, but pave the way and let it grow organically. So after two years, I realized I wanted to be registered. I wanted to branch out with my mission and vision of supporting education at the grassroots level, supporting Bahrain national, Bahraini nationals, to, in healthcare fields and different arenas to develop and push it forward. We came up with a very Arab discourse for a lot of our campaigns, and I'm very proud the last two years have been based uh, on research that I've done as part of my master's and the reading that I've done, and I think that's the way forward. Western guidelines don't mean best guidelines. We have to reinterpret them for the community, and that's what's important. So we have a variety of events in line with Breast Cancer Awareness Month, fun activities, lecture series, serious and not corporate entities, uh, sponsorship, and the community get really involved and it's an exciting time. In the 10 years, our 10 year anniversary this October, 
which is a huge mi milestone. We have a few milestones that we've achieved. And to date, i like to announce to you that we've raised 1,479,184 euros in the 10 years. So quickly getting out your cash converter, FX converter, <laughs> that's about just over 700,000 dina. And that's with 10 women who all work full time, but they use their drive, their business skills, and all sorts of other skills to push it forward. Not everyone's going to have the same vision and mission as you when you start a project or do a community engagement. And people will leave on the way because they feel that that's not what they want to do. And the hard work gets very hard and so other people leave. But this was done by a small group of women, both expatriates and nationals, with the support of the community. And I think the money is one side of it, and yes, it's important to drive different things, but the awareness and education has been totally key. The money has come secondary due to the charity's transparency. The whole vision and mission slightly shifted from doing my master's, and I wanted to get back down to grassroots levels, which was our mission and our philosophy, and find out what was important in Bahrain for Arab women. Because like I said, I can walk into different places, but until we know as healthcare professionals what's happening on the ground and important and ask, then we can change guidelines and shape things accordingly. So part of my research was to do a qualitative study of Arab women in Bahrain who have been treated, diagnosed and treated. And it was very, very interesting and I think it's all very important to look at what was important for them. Their coping mechanisms are very different towards than the West. What I found significantly was their culture and their religion played heavily on how they coped with the breast cancer diagnosis and survivorship. Because breast cancer doesn't just affect the person, it affects the family, the immediate family, it affects the employer, the insurance companies, the healthcare workers, the people on the ground. It affects everyone. It was very interesting to find out that religion played very heavy on a coping me mechanism, something that I haven't realized or utilized myself from a Western culture. Uh, the Arab women that were interviewed used religion because in their Quran they believe Allah is sending them a message and this is a test. It is a test of their faith and as a test of their personality and strength. And so while my uh, candidates went through all the treatment, they knew that this was a test from Allah and this test was everything is written and they were going to be a better person. He had a dream, he had a way to go. And for me that strength was pretty incredible and I think that's what we need to incorporate within the healthcare setting because this is what they utilise as a coping mechanism. The other part was the Arab culture and that played obviously very significantly and the talk of taboos and you're talking about people being interviewed that were in their mid 30s and early 40s. These are the women that are being affected. The youngest breast cancer patient that I've helped support was in her early 20s with a bilateral mastectomy. These cultural taboos play a, a big importance and especially the unmarried women. So these need to be really addressed in the guidelines and the treatment process. So this has very much shaped how my campaign uh, has been driven. And also from the research, I found that within the GCC, there's evidence from Jordan and Qatar to say that if we use the men in the women's lives, the Arab men, to endorse and hold their hand and push them forward, that you'll get more of a positive outcome. And so hence our campaign rationale is a thobe hand holding an abaya woman, take her, lead her, support her. All the uh, campaigns are translated into Arabic, and I think that's quite important. It doesn't need just to go into the local tabloid GDNs, golf weeklies, and things like that. It needs to be spread out. And it, you, although I'm an expatriate Australian and founder of the charity, it's driven by Bahraini nationals, and we, we have to have an Arab-centered approach. And I think all these approaches are very, very important for local discourse, and in many ways, Bahrain is the leader in those sort of aspects, which is quite important. 
So it's quite funny that I'd end up in a position of uh, moving away from the clinical situation and to be heading community <coughs> in involvement. I'm very passionate about it because I can see the difference that it makes. But it's important with community engagement and involvement that inclusion works, that every aspect, you don't do it best. If I was to think that I could do it best and man think pink Bahrain, we never would have raised the 700,000 dina. People have to take it in different directions. It has to grow according to the needs of the population. And people have to be flexible. It's not about a picture in the paper. It's not about getting your name in lights. It's about stepping back and letting other people make it grow. Vision and mission is very important. You have to know what you're going and stand by. Maybe it's because of my Dutch ancestry and being very stubborn, but when you dig your heels in sometimes, it pays off, and I think it's paid off here. None of this could have been done, basically, without the community support. And you are the community. I can't do this alone. I can't, the team can't do this alone. I need it to be done with you. So I'd like you to stand up for a minute. And I, Julie Sprach, would like to applaud you, the community of Bahrain, for helping me. Thank you very much.